You've all heard of Nanny Doss, the giggling granny. But did you know there was another active serial killer during the same era as Nanny Doss? By the time Roberta Elder was arrested in the late summer of 1952, she had already murdered at least 14 people, perhaps more. Her motive? No big surprise here. It was money. Hey everybody and welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. This is Katie Weaver. And I'm here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. It is indeed. And we're actually <laughs> recording on Monday, which we usually record the night before, but it is Monday and we're here. We are. And so I don't know if it's Monday when you're listening to this, but whatever. Happy Monday. Happy day. Whatever it is. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, we are thrilled to be here. Christy, how are you? How was your weekend? Good. It was so good. Oh my gosh, you guys. It was in the 60s on Saturday and the 70s on Sunday. And I got my fix, got to go down and walk the river twice. We're going to be nice. doing that a bunch more. That is my absolute favorite thing. And it sucks when it's too cold to do it. Uh, but we have a beautiful green belt to go down and walk around the Snake River. And so did that twice this weekend and yeah just awesome wore shorts what <laughs> yeah you so, dusted them yeah. out of some far-reaching closet yes actually <laughs> yes uh you know and i know fourth winter is gonna crush my dreams here pretty soon but mm, probably. <laughs> at least <laughs> we get a few days which is so nice it's just nice to be out in the sun i you know i put on shorts and i went you know i i get pretty tan every summer because we spend a lot of time outside and I am absolutely white as the driven snow by this time of the year. Looking at my <laughs> legs like, oh, my God, I need a little sun. Definitely. Maybe a lot. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's time for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I have got too much sun. If you are watching the video and looking at this face, <laughs> I, <laughs> we were in Montana at watching our daughter's um, season opener for her college softball team. And it was a super fun weekend. This is with sunblock unfortunately uh one of my meds is makes you like sun super sun sensitive mm -hmm. so i need a little better plan i think to protect my face i'm not really sure what that is but i think this is wind and sun but it was so worth it the girls uh they won uh all four games it was a series they won all four games uh they had two shutouts in four games our team scored 50 runs and the other team we allowed three runs <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> really, really sweet girls that we played with very nice coaches that you almost feel bad. But oh, we wow. pounded the good Jesus out of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Everyone played really well. But to this is our first foray into college softball. And for them to play your kids' walk up song and be like, and you know, up next from Rexburg, Idaho, right fielder, you know, it it's something. It really yeah. is to hear your kid's name like that and yeah, watch them shine. Cool. So, yeah, I can't say enough. We had a really, really fun time, made some new friends. Some of the parents on this team, my gosh, they are the nicest people in the world. So what can I say? I, I'm i batting a million. That's really cool. And every day that goes by is one day closer to me getting my puppies. So <laughs> Yes, it is. I'm oh, my gosh. About five weeks away now. Yep. How exciting. I'm bringing my new babes home. So that's, yeah, pretty exciting too. Uh, but with all of that being said, we do have a jam-packed episode for you guys today. We so definitely do. Christy, I'm sure there's something pretty hard to freaking understand coming. I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic over to you for, oh, Idaho. <laughs> oh, Idaho. You're trying to do something right, and I'm proud. I'm proud of it. What? Because we don't often get to say that. Usually, we're talking about 
some bullshit that's going on in this state. No, this actually, um, if you remember a few months ago, we covered the missing persons case of five-year-old Michael Joseph Vaughn. Yes. And he is missing from Fruitland, Idaho. Mm -hmm. Well, when Michael went missing, he did not meet the criteria for an Amber Alert. And we've talked a lot about how the Amber Alert system has some flaws mm -hmm. that have caused some problems in cases like this because they require that you have some information that in this case we didn't know. Um, we it's didn't know if so he was abducted. Yeah. yeah. We didn't know he was abducted. We didn't know what vehicle he might have been in. We don't know any of those things. This little boy freaking vanished. Mm -hmm. And so right now, um, there is <clears throat> a plan to expand what they call uh, endangered and missing persons alert system to make sure that we can, they can notify law enforcement and the public about people who are believed to be in danger. So it is, the bill is headed to the governor's desk right now, which is good because our governor has signed some ridiculous bullshit recently. I was going to say, if that fool doesn't uh, sign this with that quick little sign and pen, we're going to have a problem. Uh, right. Wow. He so will, though. I don't what we're trying to do, what they're trying to do is create a, an alert system that's broader mm -hmm. that like would cover Northwest states Mm -hmm. because you have to understand that, you know, where we live and even where Michael went missing, you know, he could have been carried off into Oregon or down into oh, Nevada yeah. or, you know, headed into California even pretty darn quickly. Mm -hmm. And so this would um, cover those kinds of cases. Mm -hmm. Badly so, needed. Yeah. So badly needed. So, Will um, this benefit MMIW cases as well? Yeah, I believe that it will because it's just about endangered and missing people. People. Like, it's going to cover mm -hmm. everybody. It's not just for children and it doesn't mm -hmm. have the same requirements. Mm -hmm. You know, So like, like states that have a silver alert to, and things like that. Yes. This would yes. encompass stuff like that. That's brilliant. It would. Brilliant. It would. So I wanted to share that because, hey, every once in a while, I know gets it right and this is it. So. Well, okay, keep an eye on this, but it's on the it's headed to the governor's desk. So pretty sure we're going to be seeing that. And, you know, we won't missing people won't have to meet criteria they have no control over um, in order to have an alert go out. Like, I mean, seems legit. Well, hey, I could actually send a nice note to my legislators this week. <laughs> right. Like, hey, <clears throat> thanks for getting this one right. Yes. More now here's the list of all the other stuff you've really screwed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We'll take this, most definitely. Very yes, cool. Yes, we will. And with that, I will kick the mic back to you for our main case. Okay. You know, back in the 40s and 50s, uh, I think a little sooner than that as well, the giggling granny, Nanny Doss, was on yes. the tip of everybody's tongue because she was shockingly a female serial killer the likes of which we had hardly heard about right uh, and nanny doss uh murdered a ton of people that she was the caregiver of including husbands children uh, i believe her mother you know i mean there was there was no one she wouldn't kill for right. some life insurance money uh but however she did say that she killed more for the fun of it but she also got money but you know Okay, nanny, but whatever. Oh, female serial killers. I mean, they are a special kind of terrifying. They really are. Something that has rarely been reported on, though, is that there was another female serial killer that was busted at a, the same time that was hardly publicized at all. That's Why? Because she was Black, and Black people didn't make the news. Oh. And it's a very interesting, and I'm not going to go clear down the rabbit hole on this one. You guys can do it yourselves. But uh, that at the time, Black criminals were uh, rarely really uh, reported on. And wow. it, it's a 180 from now, right? Right. But it created a lot of uh, a higher chance of probability of harm in Black communities because there was less uh, investigation and less reporting 
on sure. black criminals. Yeah. Isn't that sure. interesting? I had no that, idea. You and I said not too long ago that there are hardly any black serial killers. And what we're learning is that's not true. They just don't get the press that the white ones do. How mm -hmm. bizarre is that? But that that is bizarre. Well, for that time frame, I, it's not bizarre. But yeah, now it is bizarre. True. True. And I still think that white serial killers outweigh uh, black serial killers oh. by a huge percentage. But I white, found this white case men. to be... It's, it's mm -hmm. definitely a white male disease. Right. I mean, female serial killers are a very rare breed. And yes, mm -hmm. scary as holy hell. Yeah, they are. They're just a special breed of terrifying, I think. Mm -hmm. um, female serial killers. Yep. Absolutely. So... I'll, we'll start with when she got busted. I'm going to say, too, I, I'm going to link some articles. There is an article on Reddit, uh, which is where I first learned about this case by Sims Lover 0819, who uh, wrote this up. Fabulous article. I'm going to link it in the comments or uh, in the show description. Also, there's a great article on Medium and a couple of other places. So I will link my sources, of course with all gratitude to amazing researchers and smarty pants that uh, found this mm -hmm. case and reported on it very well. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with uh, what brought her down. So in 1952, her husband was a pastor by day or by night and a, a construction worker by day. His name was Reverend William Elder. And William became violently ill at work. And he told his uh, co-workers he wasn't sure why he was sick because all he had eaten was cheese and bananas, bananas and cheese. But uh, he was horribly sick and ended up home from work. And she called the doctor and the doctor treated him uh, for his uh, stomach maladies and said, you know, if he gets worse, then you need to uh, call us. Well, this was the first part of August and she didn't call the doctor again until the very end of August. And at yeah. that point, William was nearly dead when the doctor showed up. Holy crap. And he died. On August 21st, uh, 1952, he was only 47. And the doctor just thought that this was just weird. He acted like maybe he had the stomach flu and now he's dead. Mm -hmm. And and at that point, it had really... Uh, manifested into more like pneumonia and it just didn't make sense and the doctor just had a feeling because there had been so much death in this household so he died in 52 well two of his children had died in 1951 two in yes she oh. was the uh definition of the evil stepmother oh no annie annie pearl was nine and died on january 11th 1951 um, and they called it pneumonia and then fanny may died on march 23rd 1951 she was 15 oh dear and the doctor noted that they all had the same symptoms and that's when he got suspicious and he, yeah, so he alerted authorities and they did uh, whatever, you know, level of tox, call, tox screen or toxicology they could do in 1952. And they discovered that William had enough arsenic in his system to kill three men. Holy crap. And he had, and he lived for quite a while with that much arsenic. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awful. So one of the younger children said that uh, she was always making them drink milk of magnesia. And they think that it was milk of magnesia that was probably the carrier that she was giving them their medicine. Ooh. Yikes. So, yeah. So then they decided, hey, perhaps we should go ahead and uh, exhume the girls, which they did. Mm -hmm. And uh-oh, guess who was teeming with arsenic? Oh my God, that's so awful. Mm -hmm. 
Then they started looking into the financials of this family to discover that Roberta had life insurance policies on all three of them. No, of course she did. For around $500 a piece. It wasn't an enormous amount of money, but it was the 50s. So it was, you know, much more than we would, you know, that would be to us now. Mm -hmm. But uh, so she was arrested and charged. And they also, uh, the other stepkids said that they always saw her. She had this brown paper bag of pink powder that she got from her brother's farm that was supposedly to kill pests in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the business, but... Like rat poison. Mm-hmm. Ooh. But, uh, yes. One of the boys said that he uh, always felt sick after eating her food and had been refusing to eat there for months. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, during the trial the prosecution starts rolling out the list of people behind her that have died, that mm -hmm. were under her care. Uh oh And it is vast. So we know that her mother, Callie Brown, died under her care. We know that... We can go back to 1924, and she, her first, uh, her married name, yeah. 25 years? Well, she got married in 1924 when she was about 16 to a guy named Willie Thurmond, and they had a son named James Thurmond, and they moved to Atlanta in 1931. She hadn't killed anybody yet, and they had a daughter named Willie May. And a daughter named Lily. Now, Lily actually died when she was one week old. But they still suspect oh. that, uh, you know. That she killed her? That it's possible that oh. she killed her. Yep. So on April 14th, 1931, little Willie May died at 26 days old. And her death was acute bronchial pneumonia. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So Willie Sr. managed to get the hell out, actually. She didn't kill him. He uh, he actually left her. So then she moved on to remarry a man named John Woodward. They lived together with her son. Uh, on December 1st, 1938, John started showing symptoms of illness. And uh, was sent home to be in the care of his loving wife, Roberta. Oh, yikes. Yep. Four days later, he died at age 36. His death was called uh, chronic nephritis. Hmm. She signed the death certificate as the informant. Like kidney, chronic kidney, something? Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, but again, you know. Who yeah, knows? they could have been caused by it. Well, arsenic. it looks like arsenic uh, in some people causes some major intestinal stuff, and in other people, eventually it causes the pneumonia type symptoms. So, um, um, maybe I think in some it, people it causes kidney failure. Yeah, it, it seems to kind of just be all under the same umbrella, depending on how much you have received over what period of time and uh, how your body handles it. Wow. Yep. So then on April 10th, 1939, little James. The son started to show signs of illness, and that was in April, and on June 12th, he died. Yeah. There's no mm. cause of death on his death certificate, so we don't know for sure what uh, they called it that time, but I think we pretty much know. Yeah. Wow. Oh, no, that's not true. His death was ruled influenza and malnutrition. Mm. Yep, sorry. So stomach and lungs, yeah. Mm -hmm. Arsenic. Yep. Oof. Yep, he was 13 at the time. So oh, now... I wonder why he got so lucky to live that long. Right? But uh, life insurance policies on every one of them. So mm. now Roberta is a free bird. She has no husbands and she has no children. So she met a guy named James Crane. He was a train porter. 
He was a widower. Unfortunately, his dear wife, Mary, had passed. And he was living with his four children and his mother and his two sisters. And guess who moved to town? Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. This is not good. Mm -hmm. So they uh, got married. It's all kind of unofficial. She was never actually officially divorced from the first husband. So all of the subsequent weddings were kind of unofficial weddings mm -hmm. but, or marriages. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's probably neither here nor there at this point. But, but it's, I thought that was kind of interesting. Hard yeah. to track at that time from one state to another. Yeah. Yeah. So she becomes, you know, the stepmother from hell. So on October 13th, 1941, James's teenage daughter had a baby boy. And she lived with them and they were helping take care of her. And there was no dad in the picture that we could tell. Um, but even uh, on the birth certificate, Roberta was, or the birth announcement, I think, Roberta was recognized as Jimmy's grandmother. Well, oh unfortunately for Jimmy, when he was two, he died. Oh, my God. His death was ruled bronchial pneumonia. Uh, must be. That's what arsenic does in little kids, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That was in 43. In 1944, a little girl named Gloria Evans, who was three, who had been under the care of... Roberta, because um, she needed an adult to take care of her, apparently. So she was living with them. And her ability to manipulate has got mm -hmm. to be so good. Yep. She, uh, big surprise here, died of acute gastroenteritis. Mm. And had a life insurance policy on her by Roberta. Oh, my God. I mean, that wasn't even her kid. Yeah. No one's like questioning this whole life insurance thing at this point? Apparently, no. So in 1945, just this is happening like pretty much once a year at this point, sometimes more often. Mm -hmm. Her mother, Callie Brown, died of undetermined causes. And then in 1947, James Garfield Crane, the husband, he managed to live for, gosh, Looks to me like about 10 years under her care. Uh, wow. Guess what? Well, he died of food poisoning. Holy crap. So she was freewheeling again. And that's when she met the elder family and started, you know, knocking them off one by one. Holy so, of course, uh, yeah. Worse, when she met the elder family, William Elder, uh, he had a wife. Her name was Willie May. And she befriended the family and ended up uh, spending a lot of time with them. And then, oh no, Willie May died. Oh, oh my God. This woman is diabolical. Mm -hmm. From, wow. oh, guess what? Influenza. And guess who her caregiver was? Out of the Robert. goodness of her heart, Roberta oh, was taking my. care of her. This is why female serial killers are so terrifying. Yeah. They don't get suspected and they kill the people closest to them. And yeah. they are often seen as like really giving, loving people. Yep. I mean, you talk about pulling the wool over somebody's eyes. Wow. Mm -hmm. But that's <clears> not <throat> all. <laughs> So after Willie May died, uh, Roberta and William Elder, the, the reverend that we talked about in the beginning of the story, uh, they got married. And then, of course, we know she murdered two of his children and him. Uh, during this time as well, Roberta was caring for a 93-year-old friend named Nora Scott Harris. And, uh-oh, Nora died of acute pneumonia. Did she oh. have life insurance on these people? Like these adults? Most of them. She... Yeah, oh. most of them. Yep. <clears throat> yep. See what the internet has done for us? Like that would never go down now because yep. that information would be all over the place. 
right? Wow. It's just unbelievable. So those are the 14 that they know of. But there's always, you know, of course, big questions about uh, if that wasn't enough, are there more? It's very likely that there are, but uh, that those are the ones they were able to actually track. So again, really good investigative work went into uh, telling the story of Roberta Elder. Her nickname was Mrs. Bluebeard because there was a story at the time about a Mr. Bluebeard who uh, killed people for money. <laughs> and so she became the Mrs. Bluebeard. Mrs. Bluebeard. Holy crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she uh, was given a life sentence. Uh, she was only ever actually tried, it looks like, for uh, just the elder family, just for those three. Uh, but again, prosecutors were like, so here's all this evidence that she killed all these other people too, jury. And they were, you know, obviously a little horrified and went, she should go to prison, we think. There's no report anywhere about when she died. But she went to prison in 1952. So I think we can, you know, safely assume that she's passed quite a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, we don't know when or mm -hmm. where she's buried or any of that. It's, there's just nothing available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that's the story of uh, Roberta Elder or also known as Mrs. Bluebeard. Oh, my God. <laughs> yep. Wow completely bonkers to kick off this Monday. Yes. My gosh. The, the number of times she got away with that is stunning. Unfathomable. Yep. So with that being said, Christy, I'm going to kick the mic back over to you for some weird crime time. Mm -hmm. Coming to you in weird news is an update in the Delphi murders, Abby mm -hmm. and Libby. So Abby and Libby, we've done two episodes on them, and we did an update episode recently on them. Mm -hmm. But just as a reminder, um, they uh, died while walking the trail, the Delphi Trails in Delphi, Indiana, mm -hmm. on February 13th of 2017. They were 13 and 14 years old, and their deaths continue to be unsolved. Yeah. Well, we did an update recently about... Libby being in contact with a man on social media. His online persona was Anthony Schatz. Yes. And he was using a male model's uh, photo. Mm -hmm. as it was son. not him. It was not him. So there are some things coming to light mm -hmm. um, that that are starting to make a little bit of sense. So yep. Anthony Schatz, is, his name is actually Keegan Klein. Mm -hmm. And he's been arrested on 30 counts of child solicitation, child exploitation, and possession of child porn. And that happened yeah. in 2020. Right. Well, not not uh, associated with those girls, right? The charges aren't. Right. Not, in, not associated with Abby and Libby. Yeah. But we know that a social media account that he had... Mm -hmm. was in contact with Libby and actually arranged to meet yes. in Delphi mm -hmm. on the day that they were killed on, yes. on, the, on the Delphi trails. So recently some transcripts have been released that are some, an interview with Klein that uh, I think is starting to, Things are starting to come together here, you guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read you part of this because, well, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, the police say um, you had told investigators, and I know you say you don't remember a girl that you ever talked to, but I know you remember Liberty German. He kind of grunts like he doesn't seem to respond a lot. Yeah. Um, the police say, right, and you know you talked to her and you admitted to talking to her. And he says, I don't think I ever did, though. I talked to one of her friends, like I told them, you know, he's backing yeah. up on this. But the police said, you admitted to talking to her for a few hours at a sleepover. And then you blocked her because she was annoying. You remember? And Klein says, you're right. Yeah. And, and he says, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. So in that transcript, the police confront him saying that 
Um, his persona, Anthony Schatz, was supposed to meet Libby on the Delphi Bridge on the day that she died. Now, that is bombshell news mm -hmm. right there. That's huge. Yeah. Um, Klein says he doesn't remember saying that he would meet up with her. But at this point, mm -hmm. they actually know that that account did mm -hmm. have that conversation. Um, and he said, yeah, you were supposed to meet her, but she never showed up. That's what you said before. That's oh. what the police are telling him. And he says, that's a damn lie, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, but here's what we ha have learned. Um, Klein is not the only person using that messenger account. Right. His father was also using that messenger account. Yeah. This is or where it gets creepy. Yep. Um, so when Klein has said that the police know that it was actually his dad that was using the account. Um, so he's being interviewed by a reporter and the reporter asks, do you think uh, you're going to be charged with anything related to Abby and Libby's murder? And he says, no, I don't. Um, and McDonald says, so they haven't threatened that. And he says, mm -hmm. no. Do you feel like they're trying to get you to pin this on your dad? Klein says, yes, yes, I do. And mm -hmm. McDonald, the, the uh, reporter says, and that's probably why he's not speaking to you. And Klein says, right, because when I first got arrested, they told me that they knew it was my dad. And if I tell them, all my charges will be dropped. Mm -hmm. So Klein does say that his father was abusive and has held guns to him before. And, you mm -hmm. know, there were there's a history of domestic violence in his family. Um, but his these father girls also, creeps were sharing this account yeah. to solicit girls. To solicit. Abby and Libby were 13 and 14 years old, you guys. Yeah. So this is pretty big. Now, neither Klein nor his father have been arrested at this point. No. But we know that this is what they know. So yeah. I'm sure that at this point they're trying to get there as much um, information together. First, they want to be ready. Mm -hmm. um, now, one thing is that... Um, Libby was was really um, like really enthralled with this guy, is what the in, with Anthony Schatz is what the uh, investigators have found. And uh, so Klein actually did fail a polygraph that he was given when um, he asked if he knew them. Yeah, um, and he had deleted a search history on his phone between the days that around the time that they died. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, interestingly, if you'll remember, mm -hmm. there have been two sketches released as potential um, perpetrators in this case, mm -hmm. a younger man and an and older, an older man. man. Yep. And what did you say when you read this case the first time we reported on it? What did you say? When I read this, we read this case the first time publicly. You can find it, though. Uh, mm -hmm. I definitely got some details wrong. I'll freely admit that. But, uh, well, we don't know what we all know yet. But mm -hmm. I did say that I felt like this was a younger man that was being groomed and driven by an older man to commit this crime. Yeah. yeah. Now we have this father and son that yep. are um, now linked. So, yep. Obviously, Crazy. this is, um, oh, the other thing that they talked about is that Klein's dad is uh, a deer hunter and can carry deer through the woods and stuff. Mm -hmm. There had been some questions about if the girls had been moved to where they were and carrying them and that kind of thing. And, there's, mm -hmm. and he is saying that this would be no problem at all for his dad. So, yeah. We may see a resolution in this case fairly soon. You know, this case is only five years old. Yeah. We say only because we cover some really old cold cases. Right. But um, this is by far the closest that investigators have ever been. And now well, they yeah. have an older man and mm -hmm. a younger man. And a younger man. And they have really refused to let this case go cold. They've work, continued to work it. They've had a whole database yeah. of, uh, or a whole, like, new unit set up and created for this case specifically like there's been an enormous push to solve this case as there, there should be. Yeah. yeah 
Well, for their families, I sure hope that we see resolution and that community because it rocked them to the core mm -hmm. and still does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it was very traumatic, continues to be. Yeah. But guys, I think we're getting pretty darn close on that case. I was very mm -hmm. impressed with uh, what they've got here. So obviously yeah. they're working some angle because yeah. this information is actually a couple of years old, but it's only just now yeah. being released. Well, so, it was accidentally released. That's right. It was actually released onto uh, a court documents, uh, the court documents website and should have been sealed. Mm -hmm. And it was only posted for a really short time, but there are some podcasters and I'm very sorry I cannot find their name. I should have known. Um, I will try to post it in the case description. Uh, they deserve the credit. Uh, but they uh, he's an attorney and has access to a lot of, uh, you know, uh, databases and web. Anyway, uh -huh. he, he had just on a whim updated uh, his search on this case and found this information. Yeah. And when he read it, he knew, oh, God, this should not be released to the public. And so he alerted authorities that it was uh, out there and they pulled it really quick, but he had it and he has very carefully only turned over parts of it that he uh, felt like he could. He's, he's actually held on to plenty that uh, shouldn't be out into the public uh, mm -hmm. as of, as of late to put this case in danger. Uh, so anyway, pretty interesting. And uh, so mad props to them. Again, we will definitely find them and link them in our comments so that you guys know who they are. They're a husband, wife, uh, true crime team. True. And they're the ones who broke this open. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's always appreciated when someone does because then everybody else can take it too. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I don't think this information is anything that will compromise that case. He didn't. But he didn't. it does yeah. give us a very clear picture that they do most definitely have suspects and viable ones. Yeah which is super nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Most definitely. All righty. Well, that's our episode for today. It's Monday. We'll be back on Tuesday with a new episode, Wednesday with a new episode, Wednesday night for case updates, Thursday night for the psychic hour. And amongst all of that, we have two Patreons coming out this week. Yes, we and do. Keith and I, we have a barn burner of a Patreon, uh, one that we, a case that we really wanted to cover, a story we really wanted to tell you guys that um, is better for Patreon because we don't, you know, like it, to get sued. <laughs> it's a lot safer for us to put it on Patreon. And, and so come watch it on Patreon. You'll see mm -hmm. why we will explain what's going on. But it is a case local to us, which is why mm -hmm. we have to keep sa safety in mind. So, yeah, this is one of those. However, it's really worth telling. So. That will be coming out on Patreon in a day or so. We've promised it. We've been dangling this carrot for like a week and just between, you know, life happening. We haven't gotten it uh, out to you guys yet, but it's coming really it, soon. So It is. Yeah. That That's what's up with us. Lots going on. So mm -hmm. like, share, subscribe, comment, dislike, whatever. <laughs> but uh, come be a part of our community. You can find us at True Crime Paranormal on Facebook. And we also have a True Crime Paranormal discussion group. If you want to join that and discuss cases with us kind of behind the scenes, you can do that. And of course, you can join our Patreon, True Crime Paranormal on Patreon. So that's how yeah. you uh, search for it. Well, guys, have a wonderful day. Please take good care of yourselves. You are so worth it. This has been yet another production of True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you.